Hey, what is up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. Today we are going to take a look at another car's diagnostic tool. This is the scan gauge 3. This is basically a device used to monitor the parameters, health and behavior of your car. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so here is the box. This is the scan gauge 3 by Linear Logic vehicle monitor and diagnostics suction cup mount included compatible with vehicles 1996 and newer obd2 the specs if you want to read them the mounting kit along with the user manual the quick start guide and then we have the scan gauge itself very nicely protected we'll take a look at this in a second So here is the cable, this is exactly 70 inch long, I think this would be fine for most cars. This is a dash mount with the magnetic pad, 3M double sided tape and a manual. And this was very well protected. And here is the scan gauge 3. It's about 130 millimeters by 80 millimeters by 23 millimeters. That's quite a bigger unit when compared to the previous versions. It weighs about 179 grams. That's about 6.3 ounces. I went first with the ultra gauge but unfortunately I wasn't able to uh, get my transmission readings on the ultra gauge I will also link the video of the ultra gauge up here so you can check it out this connects to the back and this goes onto the OBD2 connector on the car here is a quick comparison and size between the scan gauge 3 and the ultra gauge this is the ultra gauge mx 1.4 and as you can see it's a lot smaller this one is so big i wonder if i would be installing this on my dash to mount this you basically remove the red film from here and then you're gonna stick this metal plate on the back of the scan gauge and then the scan gauge will just stick it's a pretty strong magnet connect this to the obd2 port on the car so i already have a module in here this is for the talk pro app i already made a video about this one i will link the video if you want to check it out this one also allows you to monitor your car information it does exactly what the scan gauge and the ultra gauge do but this one you use your smartphone to connect it through bluetooth and you are now able to use your smartphone as a monitor. I was also able to get the transmission temperature and everything I needed, but I decided to also give the scan gauge a try. All right, so we're gonna connect the OBD2 connector just right here. And the other end goes to the back of the scan gauge. And it's boot it up as you can see we have a warning accept that would you like to view a quick tutorial before getting started yes all right adjusting brightness quick command so you can increase and decrease the screen brightness by swiping two fingers vertically on the side of the screen as you can see next so changing a gauge so you basically tap it and then you can scroll up and down all right so next 
like coolant tank you can tap on it again to select or you can just select select all right end of tutorial he's able to tutorial yes all right now we are connecting all right so we have scan now with the engine on and running we have no diagnostic trouble codes let's go back let's go to gauge and as you can see we have up to nine gauges per page and we have three pages we tap to select each page I think this is a better implementation when compared to the ultra gauge I like this better and uh, yeah the big screen also comes in handy if the bezels weren't that big you can also long press each option to move it around as you can see here I think this is a very easy way to customize your screen let's go to settings you choose the color you want the gauge to be displayed in let's go with red you have options to adjust the saturation of each RGB color you have the red here you have your green so you can get exactly the color that you want and you have the blue at the bottom this is really really nice it's uh, fully customizable as you can see you also have the brightness slider as you can see really really handy to adjust your screen brightness and you can undo you can use the default settings you can go back home or apply the changes to the menu so let's go to layout and this is where you adjust how many gauges you want per page and as you can see three by three so nine as you can see you can select a two by three option to have six at a time a two by two to have four at a time let's go with three by three for more uh, options as you can see or you can have two by three on the first page and then on the second page you have a different setting and on the third page you have a different option which is really really nice so customizability wise I think this is a very very um, flexible unit when compared to the other options in the market let's go to monitors here are your monitors you have six here you can change the alert sound and you can listen to them as you can see you have three sounds to pick from let's say you pick the first one you can go ahead and choose a setting to set an alarm let's say coolant temperature go to select and now you can set up the condition now you have coolant temperature is above if the coolant temperature is above and then you set up your own value let's say 205 degrees Fahrenheit for example because with this car the the cooling fans turn on when the coolant temperature reach 203 degrees so let's set this to 205 degrees so the alarm should not go off so when it goes off you know that something is wrong because the fans are supposed to kick on at 203 degrees now we have a coolant temp alarm here the second it goes off you know that your coolant temperature is above 203 degrees which is really nice red is not bad let's go to blue like the blue better so it can match my dash so we went through all the settings let's go back and see what else we have now we have trip and here as you can see it logs your trips you have today previous you have your tank as you can see so let's go to more and here we have the setup that's just the settings we just went through okay this one is more advanced settings 
so we have the display that we just edited let's go to vehicle you can set up your tank size as you can see which is mine is 15 point nine all right and then my engine size is two point five fuel type is gas that's good and now let's go to unit temperature in Fahrenheit that's good distance in miles that's good gallons psi dollar everything is good for US units let's go to adjust this is if your speed is a little bit off for example you can come here and increase or decrease it as you can see so I'm gonna leave it to zero first I will test it and then if it's off I will come here and adjust it so you have fuel cutoff as you can see you have your fuel flow you can also change that you have your horsepower volume the speaker volume it's already at 100% it's not a very loud unit you have fuel in tank I have about uh, 75% so let's go right here that's about right fuel price is about 3.7 bucks you have the adjust and then we have advance so we have the mode which is obd2 mode the update rates this device also supports uh, Wi-Fi updates as you can see you have fast you have normal I don't know what this means for updates but I'm gonna leave it to normal and then you have your sleep event Wi-Fi updates here is the Wi-Fi update you can connect this to your Wi-Fi and check for updates as you can see reset the default if you want to reset every setting you can just do it here and then there is compatibility you can edit settings wake up voltage requires a typical amount of battery voltage uh, change to wake the scan gauge I'm not gonna mess with this so these are the settings that you have so let's go back and here is the good stuff where you can set up custom gauges or X gauge on the ultra gauge it's called M gauge on here it's called X gauge so you can enter it manually as you can see and you have a bunch of slots to fill up as you can see that's really nice I think you have a, a good amount of them so custom gauges are basically gauges that your car do not have uh, available ready so you have to look up the codes online and then create a custom reading enter the codes and it's now going to be able to read it like uh, transmission temperature on this car I know it's not a, a standard OBD2 reading so you're gonna have to create a custom gauge for that and what impresses me the most on this one is you have the auto scan so you can automatically scan for custom gauges and it's gonna load them right here all right so let's go ahead and try custom scan here we have a Ford Lincoln Mercury you have a Dodge Chrysler Jeep General Motors Honda Acura Hyundai Kia uh, Land Rover Mazda Mercedes BMW Mitsubishi Nissan Subaru Toyota Lexus and Audi so we have a Toyota let's go ahead and choose that and hit select and now let's go ahead and start scan this is what I was talking about I really love this as you can see you have your ambient temperature 46 the one I like the most the AT oil temperature as you can see 117 degrees Fahrenheit and you have current gear you have TCL lockup this is the torque converter it locks up and your transmission temperature drops significantly you have your fuel level 11.6 gallons tire pressures 
the tire air temperature that is uh, really really nice I don't know if the reading for the fifth one is correct but it says 419 degrees Fahrenheit must be wrong select ambient temperature current gear lock up fuel level all right so let's go ahead and click save and this is saved and then let's go to trip cost I'm gonna choose a standard gauge I need the coolant temperature all right and then right here I need the transmission temperature and next I'm gonna select the fuel level all right next I'm gonna choose a standard again let's go to engine load all right and then today's distance I'm gonna choose um, let's go down mass airflow why not which one I'm gonna choose let's go with battery voltage all right you can do that for every pages you have up to three pages as you can see here all right and as we press the accelerator you can see the change on the screen the mass airflow the battery voltage along with the engine load are changing so so far it's a really nice device I really like it except for the connection on the back I wish this connect to the side or at the bottom or somewhere so you can mount it flush against something on the car as you can see but unfortunately you can't do it here because of the wire coming out straight other than that I think it's a great device as you can see and uh, the size also I don't know if it's uh, necessary to have it this big I think they could have uh, shrunk it down a lot the wire is also a little bit thicker than usual because when you compare it to the ultra gauge just makes it a little bit less manageable on the ultra gauge you have a, a light sensor as you can see there is a light sensor on the corner right here and it measures the amount of light uh, in the area and dim the screen accordingly but with the scan gauge you can only manually adjust the temperature to your liking which isn't bad I would have liked if it had an automatic adjustment system where it just dims the screen according to how bright it is instead of you having to always adjust it to your liking all right so as you can see the coolant temperature reached 203 degrees but it will never go above that because the fan is going to kick on and cool it down all right still 203 all right as you can see it's going back down going back down 96 all right 94 all right so let me go ahead and turn off the car and see if it's gonna shut off okay it turns off when you turn off the car scanning as we just checked no codes but we have one incomplete emission monitor so you can go to emissions and as you can see it also has emissions monitoring and the only one that isn't ready is the oxygen sensor which I believe I have to drive uh, around for it to be completed I think it has to heat up to a certain uh, temperature to be completed alright so you have your pending no pending diagnostic trouble codes you can check the bin number I will be making a follow-up video on this unit I will be 3d printing a smaller uh, version of the enclosure and then I will check how I can fix the backside where the connection is coming out straight maybe I will get a 90 degree connector to facilitate that or I can just remove the connector altogether and solder 
the wires out directly for a permanent solution like you have on the ultra gauge but I'm not sure I might just leave it like this with a 90 degree connector coming from the back instead of straight out but uh, so far so good and the second you turn off the car as you can see you wait a few seconds and the scan gauge is also gonna turn off all right so it's just dimmed away but you can tap it to wake you can interact with it as you can see but since the car is off you're not going to be able to get the readings of the engine but as you can see it keeps trying to connect but you can mess with the setup the fill up x gauge why not the setup as you can see you can scroll through all the settings while the car is off and here are the version i have along with a number for help if you have any issues or questions and then you have the email address for support you have a fill up page for fuel economy management all right now let's go ahead and update the firmware so here you can see that we have the version 1.19 so let's go ahead and update the firmware so from the home screen we go to more setup and then you go to the advanced tab and here to the left you have Wi-Fi update and as you can see check for updates we can go ahead and click check for updates for that we're gonna have to connect the unit to the Wi-Fi so I can use my phone as a hotspot basically by turning on the mobile hotspot let's go ahead and rescan all right and we have Samsung Galaxy this is my phone we're gonna select that hit select and then we're gonna enter the password for the hotspot and connect save Wi-Fi credentials you can save alright so here are the versions so right now it lists from version 1.14 all the way up to 1.23 the current version is 1.19 pick the latest version which is gonna be 1.13 so let's select that and hit select download will begin Here is the download progress. Alright, download complete, restore the device. And the update is completed. Alright, so now let's go to more about. And as you can see, we successfully updated the firmware to version 1.23. And that's it on how to update the scan gauge 3. So in case you're wondering what happens when you connect an Ethernet cable to your router and connect the other end to the scan gauge, let's find out. So this cable is connected directly to my router. So let's go ahead and connect the other end to the scan gauge. Alright, as you can see nothing happens. 
I think that's because the router is providing 5 volts instead of 12 volts that the scan gauge requires to boot up. So you cannot run the scan gauge with your regular Ethernet connector. Alright, this is a temporary mounting solution. I have 9 gauges displayed on the first page. These are my most important gauges. I have the coolant temperature, the transmission oil temperature, the torque converter lockup, the engine load, the current gear, the fuel level, ambient temperature, uh, mass airflow, and the speed. All right, and as you can see, the current gear switches as you can see we have second gear third gear and it shows you as it is switching gears and as you slow down and stop it downshifts back to first gear let's take off so first gear second gear uh, third gear So for CD driving like this, the torque converter lockup never kicks on because uh, I noticed that it's over uh, 50 miles per hour that the torque converter locks up. So when it locks up, it shows on instead of off. But for CD driving, it just stays off. I can also switch to the second page where I have the trip information, you have the cost, the amount of gas used, the distance, and other information. The trip cost, the average speed, the tank time, tank cost. This is really helpful if you like to save money with gas. On the third page, I have the tire pressure monitor and uh, the maximum speeds I'll probably change these but yeah as you can see it's a really handy tool So like I said, I will be making a different case for this. I'm going to design a smaller case and uh, shrink the size so I can put it within the gauge cluster because I think that it's uh, just a big unit for what the, uh, the screen size is and I'm going to see what I can improve on it. So if you want to see that video, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned and let me know in the comment section uh, what you want to see next and uh, thank you for watching guys. I will see you on the next video.